Sape satta bhavantu sukhitatta bhavantu sukhitatta Hello, I'm Dave Jacobson. Actually, my name is Dharmasar Tero. That's my monk name. That's why I'm wearing these robes today, because today I want to talk to you about discipleship. Now, for the last few weeks, I've been doing a series on Nibbana. And there's something like 15 videos in the series or something like that. And in all this time, unfortunately, no one has responded with any substantial questions. Even though the subject matter is extremely deep and the treatment I've been trying to give it has been very detailed, uh, going back to the original suttas or the words of the Buddha himself. And we've been trying to unmask the role of the commentators, uh, people mostly from India, who came later on to Sri Lanka and due to their mental speculation and semantic manipulation of the texts, obscured the original teaching. So what we have today, especially in Western Buddhism, but also in Sri Lanka, Burma, Thailand, and like that, is a religious organization that claims to present the teaching of the Buddha but all they're really doing is promoting a religious agenda, a hierarchical organization, which does not follow the Buddha's actual principles or practices. This is a big problem. So when people think of Buddhism, the only thing they know is a bogus teaching that has been propagated by self-interested people, who are trying to further their own careers. That goes all the way back to you know, more than a thousand years ago when these uh, altered commentaries started to appear. So it's very important uh, that we go back to the original words of the Buddha and try to reconstruct the actual practices of the monks of his time. Why is that? It's very simple. Do you want to reach enlightenment? Do you want to be free from suffering? Do you want to be free from rebirth? Then you have to understand the Buddha's teaching as it is. My guru used to give an example. If you go to the doctor and he gives you a medicine, a prescription, you have to take the prescription as directed. If you take too much, you can risk an overdose, especially if it's a powerful medicine. Or if you take too little, maybe there's no effect, or the disease isn't fully cured. So what we have now is a situation where people are taking little pieces of the Buddha's teachings, the, the pieces they like, and ignoring the rest. And they're presenting that little piece as if it's the whole thing. And there are different approaches to this. Some people want to take, for example, the Satipatthana Sutta. I'm thinking especially of the Burmese schools. They take Satipatthana Sutta and they make believe it's the whole thing. And if you just do that, then you'll reach enlightenment. But nobody's reaching enlightenment. <laughs> then you have some other schools that think, oh, if you just chant the sutras, just chant, 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 and do rituals and offerings and pujas. Then you'll reach enlightenment someday. <laughs> but Nibbana or enlightenment is not far off in the future. It's here and now. And if we're going to reach enlightenment, it's going to be here and now, in this body, in this life. So... 
how to do this? Well, the key is discipleship. If you want to learn something complex and difficult, a performance art like music, let's say, I happen to know about music because I'm a musician by trade. Well, you have to find an expert musician. The expert musician can show you how it's done, give you the tricks of the trade, things that you can never learn from a book. I remember, for example, when I was trying to learn how to produce the proper tone on the flute, and I was reading books, and I was practicing, and this went on for quite some time, until I went to conservatory and I got an actual professional teacher. And in five minutes, I learned more about producing tones on the flute than I had in the previous 10 or 15 years of practicing. So it's the same with meditation. You can read books on meditation. You can practice by yourself. You can even go to retreats and stuff like that. But until you meet someone who's actually realized and sit down with them and absorb their vibes, huh? it's not going to be able to take you to the highest. It's not going to be able to release the potential that's dormant, that's latent in you. So no matter how much you practice, no matter how much you study, no matter how much you think about it, you're not going to be able to break through. Why? Because you don't have the experience of someone who is actually realized. That's essential. And you can't get it from a book. You can't get it from a recording. You can't even really get it from a video. That's one thing. Another thing is, what about your questions? If you've been practicing for more than two minutes, <laughs> You must have some questions. If you've been practicing for longer and you're still not getting the result, you must have some questions. There must be some obstacles. There must be something you're not getting. You read in the suttas, someone went to the Buddha and they got their meditation practice directly from him. And then in at least 27 places in the suttas that I know of. You read, and then after he saluted the Buddha and walked around him three times, he went off by himself in solitude. And in no long time, he reached the goal that is given by all the suttas and all the Buddhas for all time. In other words, he became enlightened in no long time. So if you've been practicing for a long time, what's a long time? More than two to five years or so, or actually more than 100 days, 120 days. If you haven't reached a release point, if you haven't had an oceanic experience of connection with Nibbana, you're doing something wrong. You must have questions. You must have doubts. You must have misunderstandings. So why isn't anyone coming forward? Why isn't anyone expressing their doubts and questions and fears and so on? Well, I have a theory about that. Last week, right here where I stay, we had a yoga workshop. And these are people who are supposed to be inquiring into spiritual life. And although I didn't participate in the workshop, I was here. I was available the whole time. And no one approached me. No one even tried to start a serious conversation with me. It was all just social banter, light talk, which I have really no need for or patience with whatsoever. The only person who I had a meaningful conversation with was the leader of the workshop. And actually he had no background or no understanding of Buddhist teaching at all. 
He was just trying to understand me as a person. Like, why was I here and not participating in the workshop? Well, I already studied Kundalini Yoga decades ago and got the result. So why should I go back and study it some more? <laughs> Especially from someone younger and less experienced. So everyone in the West is missing the point. The point is discipleship. To apprentice yourself to someone who knows, to someone who has realized, to someone who has got the result. What result? Nibbana. Someone who understands Nibbana, someone who has experienced Nibbana, is in a position to evaluate the various teachings and approaches and see them for what they are. Nobody else is. To give a mundane example, it's like there's someone sitting on the mountaintop. And they know they've been up and down the trail. They've been up and down the path leading to the mountaintop. They know how to approach that place. And they can see also in every direction all around. And if someone is trying to approach that mountaintop from the wrong way, they can very easily see. And they can very easily say, no, no, don't go that way. Come over this side and try this path. This is the path that really leads to the top. Because when you're climbing a mountain, it's very easy to get lost. Very easy to go off the path. Very easy to find yourself in a place where you can't make any further progress. I know. I've been all over this mountain <laughs> for almost 70 years now. And there are plenty of dead ends, plenty of blind alleys, plenty of trails that lead no place. So what I'm saying is discipleship is the key to attaining enlightenment. Now, if you just want a little peace of mind or you want to overcome some of your personal problems and deficiencies, if you want to get a little skill in meditation or concentration, I suppose you can learn that from a book. I suppose you could learn that from a video or uh, just going to a meditation retreat or something like that. But you can do that your whole life and never really arrive anywhere. I think I mentioned some time ago an acquaintance of mine, a psychiatrist from New York. And he's been going to Thailand every year for 25 years. Every summer he spends at least one month meditating intensively. And he hasn't overcome even his uh, family upbringing and childhood neuroses and all that. 25 years. So yeah, you can waste a lot of time. You can lose a lot of effort following a wrong path and get very little result in return. And you can justify it. You can rationalize it. You can... Uh, make up stories about why you haven't got there. But let me tell you the real reason. The real reason is because you won't surrender. You won't approach someone who knows and become a disciple. Now, you might say, well, you're not anybody's disciple. You're not living in a monastery or anything. Well, let me tell you. When I was 27, after a search that lasted more than five years, I found my guru. My music teacher introduced me to him. And I could tell immediately that he was far beyond any of the other spiritual teachers that were available. So I became his disciple. And I followed his instructions for more than 30 years. Whether I was together with him or I was apart from him, I followed his orders. I followed his directions. I became a disciple and I followed. That connection is essential. Later on, after he passed away and his organization deteriorated to the point where I couldn't be part of it anymore, 
I started my own organization, but I was still his disciple. And even after that organization didn't work out and I dissolved it, I resigned from being guru myself and went in search of a new teaching, I found the Buddha's path and I began to follow it and I still kept looking for a teacher until I found one who I could accept as a master. And that's Bhikkhu Nyanananda. And I've only met physically with Bhikkhu Nyanananda one time for four hours. But I've studied all his books and I've understood his teaching and I've realized it. So with his permission, I am presenting his research in the series on Nibbana. So this is the key, this relationship of discipleship. And it's not just a one-way street. It's not like you can sit in your home and say, oh, I'm a disciple of so-and-so. No, you, you have to go to that person, bow down to them, touch their feet, and convince them that you really want to be their disciple. And when they accept you, this is a very big deal. That's why it's called initiation. Initiation, to initiate means to start something. So what is beginning at the time of initiation is this relationship of discipleship. That's why sadhus put a little picture of their guru on their altar. That's why we every day perform prostrations, bow down to our master. Because this is discipleship. This is the key. This is the way. This is the door. Jesus said, I am the door. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh to the Father but through me. That means he became a disciple of John, and he expected his disciples to follow him like that as well. So we're not asking anybody to uh, make a martyr of themselves or anything like that. That's uh, a bit extreme. But what we're asking you to do is to have a personal relationship with a teacher. The teacher that you feel most accurately represents the Buddha's teaching and the practices of the Buddha's path. The teacher that you find speaks to you in a voice that you can understand. And then make yourself a disciple. Go to that teacher. Offer him some tribute. Offer him some relevant inquiries. Offer him some real respect and love. That's the only way you're going to get it. Don't be a dilettante. Don't play with this teaching. You'll waste your time. Instead, do the right thing. Do the best thing for you. Become a disciple. Sabbe satta bhavantu sukhitatta bhavantu sukhitatta